Hi, welcome to the program. I'm your host, Ron Whitlock. Today we're looking at how Latino voters across the country, the nation's biggest minority group, the swing voters who will elect either Barack Obama or John McCain as the next president of the United States, could see their family's health care improve or decline based on each of these candidates' health care proposals, realizing that more Latinos are uninsured than any other segment of the U.S. population. But first, this updates you on how Latino voters might be reevaluating Barack Obama now that the U.S. and Mexican economies are declining and their jobs and family income might be at risk. Barack Obama has said that he thinks that NAFTA needs to be renegotiated with the option of opting out of this economic agreement. Obama's co-chairman in charge of Latino outreach, Federico Pena, reinforced Obama's NAFTA plans when he told me... But let me make one other point about NAFTA because let's be very honest. There are parts of the country where NAFTA has not worked very well. For where? In Ohio and other of, of states like that. So what the senator said is let's you know uh, amend uh, NAFTA to make sure that we have worker protections and safety protections and environmental protections. Now you and I know that when you go out to that river, uh, that river is not the cleanest river it ought to be. And we were very, very concerned about some of the things that were put in that river starting way up north in, in El Paso and Juarez, and we got to make sure that we keep that river clean, that the environment is protected, uh, things like that. So that's what we're talking about, and that is uh, making sure that uh, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we make those corrections to NAFTA. To make yeah. Economic experts tell me further that 20 million new jobs in the U.S. could probably be attributable to NAFTA. Five million in Mexico, over a trillion dollars in economic activity. I asked them if tearing up the NAFTA agreement could desperately undermine the economy of the U.S. and the world. Yes, absolutely. Not, not only just the border region, but in fact all of North America, probably spilling into the world a little bit. You have to recognize that from, say, 1993 up until 2006, the data that I have, we uh, generated, just in the United States alone, 20 million new jobs during that period of time, most of which you could probably attribute to NAFTA. Our exports with Canada and Mexico have more than doubled during that same period of time, and these two countries represent a third of our entire exports for the U.S. Can you imagine for a minute what would happen if somehow we decided to stop this process? It would be, uh, I think, almost chaos. I said there's a trillion dollars involved. You cannot stop a trillion dollars. But the people that were impacted obviously have something to say about it. They think that uh, all these um, uh, jobs, manufacturing jobs, went into Mexico because of NAFTA. Those plants were going to close either way. Based on what Barack Obama told me then, and today's economic crisis indicates, facing Latino voters in particular and others, I have asked him to clarify his NAFTA plans so that you and I know what they are before we go to the polls. Now, before we begin, a disclaimer, we here at Braun Whitlock Reports firmly believe in the Fairness Doctrine, but you'll only see official surrogates for Obama on this program because John McCain hasn't been to Texas since June, specifically in Dallas, and he has never been to the border area during his campaign for the presidency. In a recent Dallas Morning News article, it was reported that John McCain doesn't plan on spending a cent to carry Texas. No offices, no staffers, no surrogates, no television commercials, and no campaign appearances. So if you're upset about no voice from the other side, ask John McCain's campaign why. We tried. Welcome now to the program, Dr. Linda Villarreal, MD, who is an affiliate of the American Medical Association, an alternate delegate nationally. Welcome to the show, Dr. Villarreal, along with Jake Fuller, who is coordinator for the Border Health Caucus. Welcome, Jake. Dr. Virial, you have analyzed prior to the program, you also, Jake, both involved in the political process nationally and in the southwest portion of the United States. You've looked at the needs Latino families have in the regions that you serve and represent. What do you see with the Barack Obama candidacy and his proposals as it relates to trying to provide access to health care to predominantly Latino voters and their families, and others, of course, that concern you and also about John McCain. My concern as it applies to Senator uh, Obama's
program or planned program for health care reform is addressing the whole issue of his public health plan, which sounds very close to a plan similarly promoted by a previous uh, first lady of the White House and now current senator from New York, addressing socialized medicine, making it perhaps a single payer insurance plan. The federal government. The federal government. Uh, and it sounds very, very close to socialized medicine. Such as in England, such as in Canada. Such as in Canada, which would then make you wonder why would Canadians want to come to the United States for their health care. It, it creates a one single payer program who decides medical care, decides whether it's needed, decides when it's going to get done, decides where it gets done, and decides by whom. Jake Fuller, your concern is that, assuming you agree with her, absolutely. It's, going to it's going to somewhat dumb down health care in the nation? That's absolutely correct, Ron. I mean, what we have is, is a, a policy that could, uh, could work against us rather than for us. And the issue is access to care. And, and, and what the government's challenge is to create a mix, to create a, an environment in which physician-led policy makes sense for all the people of, of, of this great country, in addition to the Hispanic community uh, throughout the Southwest. And you both explained to me that basically both the John McCain plan, as proposed, is very similar, if not identical, to the Barack Obama plan, both of which would, to some degree, uh, kind of socialize the system. No, I, I disagree with that, Ron. Uh, Senator McCain does not promote a public health plan. He is actually promoting utilizing our current plan, which of course is a big budget item, but not items number one, two, or three. I mean, Medicare, Medicaid, and even the state CHIP program is a big budget item. So we're not meeting the budgetary demands now. What Senator McCain is trying to do is perhaps work within what we have fine-tune it a little bit better, look into uh, streamlining it, making sure that those individuals that do need federal or state assistance are actually getting it, and those that perhaps don't are not. As it applies to our Hispanic and Southwest population, where there is a large percentage of Hispanic uninsured families, those are the ones that are going to be hurt the most because as it is now, it is difficult to get health insurance that is affordable based on their current income, whether it's mid-level income or whether it's closer to the poverty level income. Mr. Fuller, what does Barack Obama in particular need to do to alleviate the concerns that you and Dr. Virial have about him trying to socialize the health care system in the nation? First, he must listen uh, to the panel of physicians. You know, I mean, you have to understand at the top of the food chain of health care, it starts with the physicians. And what has been absent, uh, you know, from the table over the last 20 years of the discussion is physician presence and physician guidance. That has to come first, in my view. You concerned also, Dr. Pelley? Yes, I am concerned about that. And I believe you think Barack Obama would be wrong to try and do basically what Hillary Clinton wanted, and that's to uh, make sure that everybody has access to health care with the government getting the bill? Honestly, Ron, none of the candidates have been specific enough for me to tell what they want or what they're proposing. Uh, candidly, when I look at both, that, where are the specifics? How are they going to do it? Now, my, um, the way I think about the health care system is that we are really losing 48 million Americans. In those the, are the ones that are that uninsured, uninsured. And do not have are, health insurance. Those are predominantly Hispanic Latino families. Well, yeah, and others. Caucasians and, and people in Ohio, in, in, in Connecticut, everywhere that lose their jobs. And they are in the poverty line. Well, if you're in the poverty line, you're okay. But it is that endangered species between eight, 18 and 65 that have a job that doesn't afford them to buy insurance that are in trouble in this country. If you're poor, you get Medicaid. And if but you're if you're the working poor, you are the working poor, that's the worst. Right. Is that right, right Dr. Linda? Absolutely, as Dr. Pelle has so uh, eloquently stated, they are actually the ones that fall in between the cracks. 
uh, honestly. Poor got a lot. Yeah, you know, you're... Working poor, the middle class nothing. don't have any. You're a mechanic, you're a grocery uh, person, you're, you're Dillard's uh, perfume lady, you're uh, people that are working and making a living, but health insurance is the last thing on their, on their list of things that they can afford and they can't afford it. Now, granted, both candidates are addressing the whole issue of tax credits or tax incentives, but that's very confusing to the average American. What Obama is trying to promote is mandates, and that's very important in our southwest and border area because there's so many small business owners. And you know what that mandate is going to do? Mandate is going to tell that small business owner, you will pay for your employee's health insurance. Well, what that's ultimately going to do, and I am a small business owner, what that ultimately is going to do is I'm going to have to cut back on jobs or services or other benefits. So the Obama requirement now that employers offer employee health benefits and contribute to the cost of that new public program, Correct. that's where the socialization comes in well, and loss of job. Because you're saying even as you are a provider, you will have to cut your own staff if you have to provide that for the existing staff. Exactly. So he's in essence shifting the cost to the small business employer. And if you look at our border area in our southwest region, we are the, so the small business people. We are those that are employing four or five individuals, trying to provide them with health insurance. Maybe some can, maybe some cannot. The mandate is not a good idea. Obama campaign is promoting mandates. McCain is not for mandates, and I must say right here that the Texas Medical Association also opposes mandates. The Texas Medical Association, which is the state population of physicians, is promoting a pluralistic approach, meaning everybody come to the table and work to get as much insurance out there for everyone as best possible. The federal government, the state government, private programs, private enterprise, all of us working for one goal, and that's to make sure everyone has access to health care. Now, Dr. Virial, Dr. Pelle, Federico Pena, who is the Hispanic Outreach Director for the Obama campaign and is a co-chairman of the Barack Obama campaign, that means he can speak in behalf of the candidate. His words mean a lot. This is what he told me about the health care policies proposed by Barack Obama. Well, the senator has issued a very specific uh, uh, policy on health care. Number one, he wants to reduce the cost of health care because we believe that people want to buy health care if it can be affordable. And he wants to reduce those costs by at least $2,500 a year. And he's laid out a very specific plan to reduce the cost, bring greater efficiency, eliminate the paperwork, uh, get rid of some of the high costs that are imposed by the bureaucratic processes of, of health care. Uh, in addition to that, uh, he wants to make sure that for people who cannot afford it, there'll be some uh, funds available to help those folks uh, get health care. But the bottom line is uh, we want the American people to have the same quality health care that he gets as a U.S. senator. Now, as you both heard, Federico Pena, high up in the Obama campaign, co-chairman, says Barack Obama is going to provide a policy which would reduce costs by at least $2,500 a year. Your reaction? Uh, my reaction is that if, if the government cuts, and they need a big scalpel, they need a big, big knife to cut the waste, fraud, and duplication of services, and at the same time, the patients have to be instructed, and they should be incentives to take care of your health. Uh, that is, if you are smoking, you should have any, you should be paying more for your health care. And, and if you drink your life away, you should be paying more for your health care. So it's a, it's a very complicated mix here, and none of the candidates have addressed those issues. However, I think that there is enough waste in medicine out there that it can be done in uh, what I'm afraid of, that we may wind up with the biggest VA system in the world. And we know that the, the VA, though, they do a pretty good job with their patients, uh, though when you give them the chance between do going Medicare or going VA, uh, almost always they say, hey, let me go to the private hospital and not to the VA hospital. So the issues are immense out there. And again, I repeat myself that the candidates have not given specific enough probably for political reasons, on how they're going to fix the problems of health care in America today. So, Dr. Virial 
as the alternate delegate nationally to the American Medical Association. You've seen what Federico Pena said on behalf of Barack Obama. You've also read what John McCain, his campaign, talks about. That is a $5,000 tax credit for families, $2,500 per person. Doesn't that mean anything when they say one thing and Barack Obama says another? Or is that smoke and mirrors? It's smoke and mirrors, I think. They're both basically saying the same thing, but they're not saying how they're going to do it. My only concern, as it applies to Senator Obama's statement, is, is this new public health plan. And that would be of concern to all Americans, but most especially those in the South Texas uh, border and Southwest area, where, you know, at the end of the day, it, it, we are always at the end of the list or at the end of the line. And if, if, if we're dealing with a national health plan, a federally funded, federally mandated, federally controlled health plan, we're having, as Dr. Pele, Pele already mentioned, we're having issues with bureaucracy, abuse, duplication uh, already in a program that is theoretically pluralistic at best because we have federal programs, we have state programs, we have private enterprise, and we have programs that will assist those that fall between the cracks. We're not delivering the, the potential of each program and now what Senator Obama wants to do is create one big national public health plan. It's going to create chaos. Both candidates are not really indicating how they would implement their program. Uh, I believe that what uh, Mr. Obama is saying is, and maybe uh, I'm interpreting too much in what he says, is that he's going to have, uh, he, he will allow private medicine to go on and then he will have like a VA for private non-veteran non patients. And that is what I read between the lines. Now, the, the and issue... We all know the VA hospital system doesn't work very well at all. The issue, Ron, is that when we created NAFTA, I don't think that we had in that agreement to take care of the health problems of south of the border. And I wonder how both candidates plan to eliminate the overburden that is created to the health systems in the border of, from all the patients that come all the way from Nicaragua, Argentina, Poland, and Mexico to seek health care in the border. When there aren't enough physicians, and we have, as Dr. Pelle has mentioned, a burdening uh, population of perhaps uh, non-citizen people coming across the border and for a huge healthcare. shortage of nurses right. to be in. Absolutely. Then you are going to be burdening a system that is already overburdened by, um, I, I don't use the word, the immigration problem that has not been addressed either. Neither one has addressed the immigration program as it applies to health care. And as it applies to uninsured, those 48 million in the United States are citizens. They are working. They are paying income tax. They are paying Social Security. That's not including those that perhaps are not in those roles. Now, the Obama campaign provided to us two congresspersons from the state of California to talk about the uh, Obama campaign and plan for access to health care and providing health care for the uninsured. He has a comprehensive plan for making sure that uh, health insurance is affordable for every person who desires health insurance in this country. And as an industrialized nation, the fact that we have 47 million uninsured people is just not acceptable. Barack Obama has said two very important things about health care. First, he has said if people could afford it, they'd get it. That's been the biggest problem. Who can pay the five to six to seven thousand dollars in premiums? On top of that, the cost that you'd have to pay if you went to the hospital beyond the premium. It would bankrupt most Americans to try to have a health insurance policy for a year, especially if you have a family. And so what he has said is, one, let's make it affordable because there are millions of Americans out there who would buy it if they knew they could afford it. The second thing he has said is this, every single American should have health insurance coverage. Tell us what either the Obama plan or the McCain plan would do as it relates to the audience. Senator Obama's plan is pursuing a more global, national public health plan. 
like exists in Canada and Great Britain. Exactly. And the way the program exists now is not a good program anyway. It isn't reaching everybody. It would be worse because then we would have something almost similar to a single payer. They decide, they do, they tell, say when, where, and how. It's going to eliminate that access to health care for that patient, and it's going to take away the freedom of choice. Dr. Pelly, do people in Canada come to our country for health care because the line is too long in their own country where they can get it at no cost? For certain procedures Only the they do, but they have an excellent delivery system for babies and, and pregnant, uh, for expecting mothers. They have an excellent system where they allow the mother to be off work for many weeks, actually, better than our country. So that, th is, the, is the amount of income that a practicing physician who only may have 20 years of active life being a physician, they've got a cap because they're in a system like in Canada and could come here and make more money in the United States? Yes, they do. They so do. the quality, therefore, of physicians, at least, the brightest and best, are going to leave Canada and come to the United States because that's a socialized system and this is not. Is that a true statement? And, and actually, I have so many of my colleagues that are talking about going to, to Egypt or other countries to practice if they socialize medicine in the country. Saudi Arabia in particular. Saudi Arabia. Bottom line is we want, we want to maintain freedom of choice. You, you should have the right, our, our, our audience should have the right to choose their physician. They should have the right to go and have a medical home. They should have the opportunity to deal with either a private insurance company or a federally funded program. They should be able to get good quality medical health care. And perhaps a partnership of all programs is the best way. Senator Obama is not promoting partnership. In my opinion, he's promoting mandates and a national public health plan. Dr. Pelley, 15 seconds. It's a toss up. I. Uh, I think that uh, we are, uh, we need to uh, prepare for interesting times in the field of medicine and I believe that some sort of a socialization or some sort of a uh, equalization of the health care is about to happen whether McCain wins or whether Obama wins. Well, we're going to keep you informed between now and November 4th so stay tuned here to the program. I'm your host, Ron Whitlock. You can go 24-7 to our website, ronwhitlock.com, to preview this program or have anyone else do so worldwide. Till next time, adios.